The game's not designed to be played at four digit corruption. Um, so we don't expect people to go that high. So we don't, um, there, there is less of an incentive to get that high based on drop rate numbers. Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host Aaron and for today's video we're headed to the world of Last Epoch. Mike, one of the senior developers at 11th Hour Games, held his normal Friday Q&A live stream on Twitch, which means I get to bring you Dev Chat 132. As always, Mike answered lots of great questions from the community and gave us some 1-1 one, one Cycle 2 teasers. And if you didn't know, every Friday during this live stream, we play Dev Chat Bingo. Trying to guess what questions are going to get asked, and I'm happy to say we had a bingo this week. If you ever want to come by and check it out, it is every Friday on my Twitch Aaron Action RPG. Okay, let's jump into the first question, and this is around hideouts. This is around the completion zone, where you end up after you finish an echo. We get more NPCs on the hub after we finish an echo. I would love to have a spec reset NPC and faction NPC so I don't have to leave the model. I, I, I don't think we're planning on this. I know we're not planning on it. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, you can always leave a suggestion on um, the suggestion threads, though. Give him a sec. Specifically those two that you requested. I can see other ones, but specifically those two. This led to this follow-up. Uh, is there any chance in the future that we'll be able to customize the reward room we wait in uh, after an echo? Oh, like the uh, M-Rest. Um, I don't actually know what it's called. Echo of a world? Echo of a world. Oh, that's a cool idea. Um... Yeah, I mean, like, you could, like, instead of a hideout type system, I think it's a cool idea. Sitting on a gold mine. Hideouts in PoE, where your map device is, you can do so much with it. Could you imagine taking that same thing to Ellie? Great, sell us MTX or give us rewards for seasons or whatever it is. That would be awesome. But we are still not done because there was another question. All right, to add on to the customization of the Echo Completion Reward Room, could you foresee in-game gold purchases of NPCs that are interactive, such as a Prophecy NPC, to cut out some time of the load times and add quality of life a bit? Um, maybe. I, I really don't want to commit to that one because I, I know there's some serious problems we have with that one. Um, that is hotly debated. They want you going to the end of time. They want town hubs to feel alive. So if we had our own area hideout that we could decorate and we would have NPCs there and we have a training dummy and we could do all our stuff, the world might not feel alive. I wholeheartedly 1000% disagree with this. Having our own areas to customize, to make your own, that maybe you can invite friends to and have a an hangout area. It's almost like kind of the start of the clan guild system would be absolutely awesome. Whenever I wanna, whenever I wanna respec, I always go to the training area in Hyboria where the arena is because you have the stash there, you have a vendor there, you have the dummies there, and you have the respec person there, and it loads so much faster because you don't have to worry about loading everyone at the end of time. I basically already have my own space. So I don't know, I, I would love this feature. Speed of development. All right, how does the team see its speed of development? Did it change after 1.0 slower or faster? Um, so I think, I think overall, I think we're very fast developing uh, content overall, especially for our size. Um, I think that there, um, we've been putting a lot of eggs in the 1.0 basket for the last year. And um, so there's a lot of stuff that we're sort of like building up and, and released all at once with 1.0 that um, it's not always obvious, I guess how like, how resources are being allocated and 
how much time individual features take to create and things like that. So something that seems like it takes a long time might take not very much time. It seems like things that seem like they might not take much time take a long time. That's that's the way more common one. People people say all the time, well, it's easy, just do this. And you're like, three weeks worth of work. Come on. <laughs> like, this is not an easy thing. This is, this is a significant uh, time investment, a development hours investment that we need to weigh if it's worth it or not. Um... But but yeah, so so sometimes it's tricky to tell how much the, the like the relative time that goes into making something. I think, um, and, and the other way it can happen too, where you're like someone's like, well, this couldn't happen. And you're like, well, it took ten yes. seconds to do. Um, mm -hmm. You just get lucky like that sometimes. Um, so the question about how fast we're, I think we're actually pretty quick overall. Um, I think that uh, we are. We hadn't we like we kind of started work on 1.1, like a, a little bit after 1.0 came out because we were doing a whole bunch of hotfix and stuff for 1.0. So there was, there was some things we started with 1.1. So there's probably less in 1.1 for the same time than there is in 1.0 for the same time. If that makes any sense. But I think you'd be quite pleased with what there with what there is in 1.1. I am excited. Lots of good. In case you're curious, Mike started a new Beastmaster, and he asked us what we want him to play, and I said Solo Raptor, and then someone else said Serpent Strike. And he's like, okay, I'm going to just play off-meta basically horrible skills. So right now, he's leveling a Serpent Strike Raptor build. <laughs> Mike gets a little spicy. Can we expect each class to get a new skill for next cycle? No, you cannot. You can expect all classes to get zero new skills for next cycle. There are no new skills coming next cycle. I've said this before and I will say it again. Um, or will you focus more on fine-tuning what's there? More on fine-tuning what's there. Uh, no new skills coming for 1.1, but I do want to put out a quick correction. Last video I said there will be no changes or updates to Forge Guard. And I guess I misheard or there was communication in the chat where they said um, that there won't be no changes. So there'll be some changes, not no changes. Probably just little changes, but Forge Guard will get something. Cow level? Any plans for some meme levels? For example, cow level, exalted mage birthday party crash. <laughs> um, we've had many ideas for things like that. Uh, there's a few that I would love to do. Um, I don't, I don't know how, uh, we haven't got the okay to make one yet. Let's put it that way. I think we're probably looking more towards like Real content first. Don't want to take away from uh, the the other the main stuff yet. Like EHG, like have hasn't given you approval to make it yet, or Blizzard won't let you make a cow level. Where are we going with this? Just just do it. WASD movement is Wazzy coming in. Um, I don't know if we ever actually settled on that or not. Ah. Uh... I, I know it's not available for 1.1, I can tell you that much. Not coming next update. I'd like to though. I think I think we're at a point where um You know if if we can if we can find the time to add it, I think it would be a good thing. It's it's a pretty significant addition. This is this is another one of those things I was talking about earlier about like, oh just add it and it's easy. Well, yes, but actually it's extremely hard. Um so you know, I I'd, I'd like to, but do I have enough companion slots for this. Let's mark this as future update. A question from my friend Moxie around older passive trees and giving them threshold nodes. Plans to rework update some of the older classes passives tree to be up to par with the new classes. Warlock Falconer, Warlock has like every node with a rank five bonus passive with class like shaman who have very few yeah we are we are um updating the passive trees for every every mastery um slowly over time it's not a um uh, like a 
a complete top to bottom rework of every one of them or anything like that, but there are changes all over the place. And we are slowly adding in more of those threshold nodes to trees as we as we see fit for them. Now, I will say I totally get what Moxie's saying. We were chatting for a little bit, and I said, this is a question I ask all the time. Forget the visuals, forget the skills. When you compare an older class to a newer class, or I guess older mastery to a newer mastery, the passive tree is huge. Those threshold nodes, put three points in to unlock this, or put in five points to unlock this. Some of those threshold nodes are build-defining characteristics, and you notice immediately when you're playing Forge Guard or something older that you do not have access to the same power. Teaser number one. Check this out. Now, if you were already paying attention earlier, you would have already seen this, but too bad it's the first one you get. Saving the other one for later. Don't worry, I'll come back. As far back as my head tilts right now. <laughs> This is a ring, if you couldn't tell. Thank you very much for the sub. Yeah, we're with uh, several gifted subs there. Chat thinks I'm on to something here, okay? Right off the bat, when I saw this ring, I said, Forge Guard, new unique ring. I'm putting money on it. And again, if I actually knew I wouldn't be able to say it, I would just be like, I know what this is, but I can't say. I'm guessing this is a new unique ring for Forge Guard. Now, Aaron, why would you think this? Well, the colors right off the bat align with Forge Guard. It is orange. But as you could see, the new Forge Guard shield has very similar characteristics. My guess. New Forge Guard ring. Teaser number two, and I'm gonna allow this teaser to actually take out this video. Mike, thank you so much for these Friday live streams. Community truly appreciates it. Even during the downtime, EHG is taking the time to connect with its player base and is always such a fun time. And again, we got a bingo. Two ass at the end of the video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. But of course, only if you think I've earned it. And if I haven't earned it, I'm going to work harder for you. Ask number two, check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 132 members that have signed up. I get asked all the time, what's the best way to support? And Patreon is it. Game night is coming up May 9th. We have a brand new action RPG V Rising server. So if you want to be a part of game night and get into the Patreon V Rising server, join the Patreon, hit me up in, on Discord, or hit me up on Patreon. I'm done. Mike, take it away. Um, but here's a cool teaser. No, oh, that's another question. Well, this is up. Uh, there are a few hidden areas that I have found. Yeah, these areas unlock something. Um, uh, I don't know, something freighter, or are they just cool hidden things? Uh, bovine type level, perhaps. <laughs> um, there are there are uh secret areas in the game that don't have a wider implication at this time. Um, there are secrets in the game that do have other implications uh, for, for things you can unlock. There's no bovine type level uh, scale event at this time. Uh, any plans for classic mage cosmetics, like some blue robe or something like that? Many of the cosmetics are too flashy for my taste. Um, I think the transmog system that we eventually get in will be to your liking. Um, cause there are some, some less flashy options, um, for, uh, for like, just like just early base gear has a lot of less flashy options. So I think, I think you'll find transmog system useful there. 